she's not in there, Harvey. The farmer not. There's no answer when I found it on the other hand. She swore it only came out in a pine box. Oh, she was only saying. Yeah. Oh, I can see it. Oh, Stanley, there you are. How did you run off, you naughty boy? You know why. I don't know why. Oh. Connie tried it on, didn't he? It's due to speak. It wasn't the way it seems to What wasn't? Maggie will tell you. I don't even like it. Like tell you what, Mum, I ain't never going back there again. Oh, don't you worry, my love. Neither am I. But what's keeping him so long? What's going on here, then? Well, I found a Uwix baby. Mum's still in there. Oh, she might not be. But I know she is. I can feel it in me bones, that stubborn old woman. I'm going... Oh, I know your council wanted to rehouse us, but you've gone too far this time. <laughs> it's nothing to laugh at. However, the London County Council... Excuse me, Mr Chairman, but on a point of information, would you mind telling us exactly what size this disappointing response was? Well, more negligible than disappointing, Councillor Moon. Yeah, but in round figures. In round figures, none. Mm. Can't get rounder than that, can you? Terrible. You mean to say that in all the private houses in the whole of Hackney, there's not a single spare room to be made available to our homeless people? Not that's been notified to the housing department, and that's the problem. So what are we supposed to tell our constituents when they come to us for help? Nobody said the post-war reconstruction would be easy. Well, it's all right for you. You've got a nice little semi over Manor House. Councillor Moon. Sorry, below the bell. Thing is, it's a subject close to me heart. I'm homeless myself ever since the flats blew up. My mum's had to uproot, go and live with her brother in Northampton. All the other tenants from old block are keeping round relatives. Me and my mate have had to move into the common lodging house. A common lodging house in Well Street? Yeah. You know it, do you? Mr Chairman, I hope Councillor Moon did not exert influence to get into Well Street. Some of my constituents are still on the waiting list. Right, Stan. There's one there! Well, slow down. I'm the one was hanging them up. Well, that one's nearly dry. I thought we had a system. We have. You're mucking it up. Mm -hmm. Ain't bad, is it? Ain't the pattern supposed to match right across the wall? That's all the thanks I get for brightening the place up, eh? Should have got Dad to help. Then, place to fall down before he'd shift himself. Fucking hands flat. That wasn't Dad's fault. It was an unexploded bomb. Till it exploded. Mum, what are we going to do with the rest of the paper left over? Well, we've still got the all to do. It's your bedroom. I don't want soppy pink flowers all over my walls, thank you very much. You'll love what you're given and be grateful. You can give it to Dad so he's brightening up where he's staying. I don't think you're allowed anything tasteful in a doss house. It's not his fault. When Father painted the parlour, you couldn't see Mum for paint. I helped. I'm sure you did, son. Oh, it's nice of you to come round, Harvey. You'd heard we'd nearly finished, had you? Hey, Ree, ain't this pattern meant to match up right Don't across... start. Are you sure you're allowed to do all this decorating? It's a free country. 
Oh, Ray, it's the only whistle. Oh, it's all right, Dad. We've got some turps. Look, just be careful. Just go there. Ain't you supposed to wait for the council to come? Well, it's bad enough living in this dump without waiting for your dozy lot to come knocking on the door. Oh! Oh, I'll do that, Stan. Cool! A foreign stem! From her, is it? Harriet. Oh, yeah. Are you sure you're supposed to let him read that? Isn't it rather intimate? That's yeah, only a postcard. Dear Harvey, I am having a grand time here in Holland. I hope you and your family are all well. Best wishes, Harriet. It's not what you call torrid, is it? You can't put much in a picture postcard. Well, there's usually room for wish you was here. Well, she's got big handwriting. Yeah, she's got big feet and all. I didn't want to be the first to mention it. She is right there, because I've had a slipper across my bum. Wait. It feels like a size 10. Don't be catty. It's a shame she bucked off abroad just when you was being made homeless, Harvey. You could have sublet a room in her mansion flat. She had to go. She's got family there. She hasn't seen since before the war. Anyway, it's her Aunt Hilda's flat. Ain't that big? It's not small. No, mind those covers, please. How do you know? I work in Kensington, remember. Elves Court. Cool. It's all the Royal Borough. Yeah, what time is it? Nearly seven, why? Why didn't you tell me I'm supposed to be up the hotel by half eight? Can you give Stan his tea? Here's a nice bit of corned beef for the larder. Well, enough for two. Dad, can I have that stamp? Yes, yeah, son, ain't you done too many of these? Oh, that's lovely, Al, because if it dries, I'll only go to waste. I hope we get in soon. I don't feel very well. <laughs> well, that's not going to help your smoking. <coughs> Come Maggie! Is it? Cigarettes is valuable, Maggie. So's your elf. Eight more, please. since you've been in that doss ass. No, it's not that. I just feel a bit knackered, that's all. I'm not surprised. I mean, how are you supposed to get a decent night's kip in a dump like that? Well, you can't. I mean, what with worrying about the fleas and people nicking your shoes. And I've been sweating like a pig the last few nights. Then why aren't you out looking for a place? Oh, well, when I'm Because that's Harvey's department, isn't it? He'll find us somewhere to live. He's got clout. He's on the council. If Harvey can't get us... Oi! Oi! Sorry, house full. But that lot pushed in. Life's like that, isn't it? Good evening, Mrs. Moon. Good evening, Mr. Rilling. I must say how pleasant it is that the weather's holding. Yes, it has been rather mild lately. Yes, it has. We've been very lucky. I noticed we were rather late arriving this evening. Oh, I'm most terribly sorry. My son was taken ill with a temperature. I had to send for the doctor. Oh, not too bad. No, no, nothing serious. Just a jippy tummy. My daughter's looking after him. No offence, Mr. Rilling, but if I didn't have to work... I quite understand, I... Mrs. Moon. It can't be easy for a lady on her own. A war widow's pension scarcely covers the boy's school fees. Quite. Good evening, ladies. I trust you enjoyed dinner. Can one enjoy stuffed heart? I want a pink gin. A bitter's in? Bitter's out. Bitter's out? And Miss Elmsley will have her port with lemon? Certainly not. Certainly not. Why lemon? Elsie and Doris will have their usuals. Two double stretchlings coming up. He didn't give you a wig in, did he? I can handle this sort in my sleep. You wouldn't want to, though, would you? <laughs> Good evening, ladies. 
Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, good evening. It's, um, it's... it's Squadron Leader Brook, isn't it? You remember. Of course. And it was Whiskey and Splash, am I right? Spot on. I thought you were flying off to Africa or somewhere today. Technical hitch. May I buy you one? Oh, that's very kind, but I'm afraid the manager doesn't allow us to drink whilst we're on duty. Mm, then perhaps you'll allow me the opportunity to offer you a drink after you've been debriefed. I'm sorry? Air Force expression. Oh, of course. Ah, oh, go on, pull the other one, mate. Look, the council's doing all it can. We can't put the world to rights in five minutes. I wouldn't mind if we weren't over there building houses for the bleeding jerrys, while over here, old soldiers are sleeping rough. I thought you were staying with your mother-in-law. Yeah, right. My mother's been very kind to take us in. Oh, don't start all that, Edna. No, it's this government what's took us in. What was the point of voting for your lot if you can do sod all for us? I fought in two world wars, you know. Hold on. We're all in this together. I'm homeless myself. Oh, a likely bloody story. You're calling me a liar. You don't have no idea what we've been through. You're not the only people who suffered, you know. Oh, come on, George. I'm glad we never put our cross in your box anyway. No. No, I won't come on. I've half a bleeding mind. Don't flatter yourself, mate. You think you're better than us, don't you? I used to box, you know. What, kippers? Well, hit him, George. Right. <laughs> Oh, what you don't you do? I'm sticking up for me rights. You'll end up with lodgings down Pentonville, don't watch your step. Castle, the moon is here to help you. If you want to clock somebody, try the borough chief letting off his son. Oh, well, where does he hang his hat? Well, go out of the building, go right down to Med Street. Yeah, turn right. I hope you've got a morning on that. Rosie! Miss Flynn! Phone! Hello, Acne Labour Party. What? No. If you're looking for somewhere to live, I'm afraid there's not much. Oh! What? You've got a flat to let. Hold on. No. No, you've come through, yeah? To the right person. I'll make sure it goes to someone Worthwhile. Uh, got? What you got? Oh, got Gottlieb. Right. Right, thank you very much, Mr. Gottlieb. Hey, Rosie! You'll never guess. There's only a flat to let in acne after all. Oh, well, if you want to catch up with Mr. and Mrs. Soldiers, I just... Hey! Bugger the old ones. I've um, come about the flat. Oh. You came here very quick, no? Yeah, well, no, it's uh, Harvey Moon. Uh, sorry, I didn't quite catch your name on the phone. Gottlieb. Erich Gottlieb. Gottlieb. Got it. Right. Please, come through. Very nice. Uh, this is where I live. Oh. Tell me, Mr. Moon, have you got family? Well, no, it's only me and my mum. Only I can't have children. I'm very sorry. No, I mean, I must sleep during the day because of my work, so I must have quiet. I, I work during the night. Come, I'll show you the flat. Please. This way. This is the bathroom. Lovely. Now, this we all share. Hey, I must get a bit crowded on bath night. Uh, no, we use it one at a time. Very sensible. <laughs> Come, there's just one more um, 
uh, spheres. Um, fly, uh, flight, right. Yeah. They're bigger than they look from the outside, aren't they? I'm afraid it's rather shabby. But it's been empty for six months. Since the last lodger took all the money out from the gas meters and ran away in the middle of the night, the Momza. Momza? Yeah, bastard. Yeah. Well, you can rest assured we won't get up to any of them tricks. Do uh, you want references? No, no, the council sent you, you must be all right. And Frida said it's not right to leave rooms empty when there are so many walking in the streets. Of course, it hasn't been decorated since before we moved in. No, long time before we moved in. But when you have nowhere, a cave is a palace. Well, that sums up my position. Well, you are looking at the furniture. It's Drek. Drek? It offends me. You do want to let this place? My grandfather was a Tischler. A carpenter master. If he was alive, he would have a heart attack. Oh, I see. What rent are you asking? Oh, I was thinking uh, one pound a week. But to you, 19 and 11. I'm sorry? Forget it. Well, you, you don't want the flat? Of course I want the flat. <laughs> Is this it? No, no, there I see a bedroom. Do you want something down? Well, if you want, you can pay one week advance. <laughs> and if you want a deposit against breakages... Breakages? <laughs> you break what you want. If you take all the furniture, you make a pile in the street and put a match on it, what can I charge you? Five shillings. <laughs> Eric! Yeah? Oh, das Waschbecken ist verputzt. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Herr Moon. Er hat die Wohnung gemietet. Hello, I'm Frida Gottlieb. Pleased to meet you. Frida, why do you wash your hair in the sink? So what do you want me to do? Send it off to the bag wash? I am a baker, not a plumber. Ah. Excuse me, Mr. Moon. It's all right. <clears throat> Got to be going anyway. Uh, if you want some help to bring in your things. Nah, I can manage a carrier bag on my own. <coughs> right in a Santa Claus, eh, Harvey? See if he's got any houses left, eh? See? What you doing here? Olivia, you remember? Just two of my suite at the Savoy is ready, you understand? I thought you was meant to be out with Max. Yeah. We were, but I started to feel really worn out. It's nothing new. We didn't get into the picture palace. I've got no energy, Harvey. I've been to look at a flat, Lou. You never. You know, Stanford Hill, it ain't much. Point of fact's no better than this place. Well, it must be. Nah, it's a gas lighting, <coughs> everything covered in dust. <coughs> well, it's got to be better than the dust out, though, isn't it? Thing is, Lou, <coughs> it ain't very big. Uh, Mum and I need have a tiny little room as it is. I'm going to have to keep on a convertible <coughs> divan thing, all sharp springs sticking in my house. <coughs> so where am I supposed to sleep, Harvey? It's all the space there is, Lou. What? Well, landlord said it's only for two. You were writing to me, weren't you, Harvey? What can I say, look? I feel really awful. You and me both, mate. Blimey! Nearly there. Do you mean there's more? Come on. Oh, if you'd have said this place was on top of the monument, I'd have stayed in Northampton. It's only four flights, Mum. Expect me to get up and down four flights umpteen times a day with my feet. Easier than without them. <laughs> Lovely view though, eh, Mum? You can see right across to Acne Marshes. At least you can when the gasometer's empty. All mod cons, eh? Yeah, and what's mod cons when they're at home? Which I ain't. Modern conveniences in the state agent's parlance. What do you mean, modern? The lavvy's two floors down, and the cistern's older than I am. Oh, I don't know why I bothered. I went through hell and I water to find this place when an empty flat in Acne is rarer than an air on a billiard ball. For all the thanks I get. Yeah, but you're on the council. You should have been top of the list for a proper flat. Oh, blimey. Oh, phew, I had an attic room like this 
when I was in service before the Great War. I hated it then, I hate it even more now. My old flat weren't a palace, but at least we had a proper front door and our own lovey. And I had decent neighbours and all the shopkeepers knew me. Come on, Mum. Take your coat off. Oh, I don't know if I'm stopping yet. Oh, for crying out loud, if I'd have known you were going to carry on like this, I'd have left you in Northampton. Lou could have come and lived here instead. What? You mean there's no room here for poor old Lou? <laughs> Only the window box. But I thought you were supposed to be his pal. I thought it was you that looked out for him all through the war. Yeah, but the war is over now. <laughs> Look, I can't wait nurse him forever. Look, when I find a bigger place, Lou will be welcome, but as it is... Anyway, I thought Lou got on your nerves. He was always going on about having no privacy, about him eating you out of house and home. Well, I wouldn't have abandoned him in a DOS house. Politics has made you artless. It's not a DOS house. It's a communal lodging house. The council's put in cubicles. Oh, hang out the flag. It's only temporary, Mum. When Harriet comes back, we get it. We'll find a proper house somewhere. Oh, Rita's going to give you a divorce then, is she? Nice bungalow. Then you and Lou will have somewhere to live. You won't have to worry about all them stairs and your feet. Oh, Harvey, the likes of us can't afford to start thinking about buying a house. Well, I couldn't on my own, but, uh, well, Harriet's got her nest egg. Oh, very choice. Ponsing off a lady. Do you want to live in a nice house? What, in the suburbs with you and Mrs Wright? Well, it won't be Mrs Wright, it'd be Mrs Moon, wouldn't it? Well, if I was there, it wouldn't strike me as much of a bargain. There's no talking to you tonight. I'm going to get something to eat. Do you fancy some pie and mash, or uh, did you dine on a Pullman car? No, you can bring me something in. And put the light on before you go. Right you are. You got any matches? It's not gas, is it? What if it is? There's one here up Turnpike Lane, but it's only for one. Oh, I hope you're not going to do what I did and throw your lot in as a dead loss. Lou may not be a genius, but at least he's not too faced. Hello, Dad. Son. Megs. Well, if you time this visit to try and cop a free meal, you're out of luck. It's all gone. Actually, I want to have a word with you. So you've spoken to Lou, then, have you, Megs? Didn't you want Uncle Lou living with you and then, Dad? It weren't like that, son. It's all I could find. Honest, Megs. Don't worry, Harvey. She'll get over it. No, she beaten won't. Myself, I was amazed you propped up that long streak of piss as long as you did. Well, you watch your language in front of Stanley, and Lou is not a long streak of piss. He's just under the weather. Well, you've got to answer to you now, and I wouldn't have had him cutting up my own. You didn't want Dad clotting up your own either. Who asked you, Clever? Mum likes Lou. Got her and me back and all. Serves you right. At least she's talking to me now. I ain't. Believe me, Mags, as soon as I find a bigger place, Lou will be welcome. Bigger place? There's only three places to let in the old bloody Tottenham. Are you going to leave that on the floor? Yeah, she only hoovered three weeks ago. You're getting a sight too cheeky, my boy. Just because your red mistress goes swimming off to the continent and you run right at school. always have to drag Harry into the conversation? I'm sorry, I'll never mention her again. Some of the kids in my class say Miss Wright had to go away because she was up the stick. Oh! I was the only one who said she wasn't. You are a pig. Margaret, you're supposed to be doing the washing up. Where do you think you're going? To see Lou. Now look what you've done. Stanley's keep round. Oh, Ta, I'll put it on the table. You know, don't, don't like to fall behind, pay my bit. Oh, no one could accuse you of that. Always put him first. What's up, Harvey? Guilty conscience. Do I say Harriet's coming back in a couple of days? Oh, that's it. Relatives over there. One of her cousins in Dutch underground. What was he, ticket collector? Free. I think you ought to wear it from me before you wear it from anyone else. Mm. I want to get married. No, Harvey, you're not catching me that way twice. Don't you take nothing serious? Well, I'll leave that to you. You're on the council. We haven't really discussed it properly, but since she's been away, I thought about nothing else. Yeah. They do say absence makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah. Mind you, they also say out of sight, out of mind. Is this the one? No, that is not the one. Come on, Lou. 
That is the one with the dog who ain't had a decent dinner since before the war. Oh. Well, which one is it then? I don't know. But I'm fed up and I want to go home. I ain't got an O. Excuse me, sorry to bother you, but. Not today, thank you. Oh, hello. Uh, the bloke round the front said that the woman round the back might have a place no, in the basement. I beg your pardon? We well, was wondering if you had any rooms. Are you from the council? What, us? No. Is that a council spy snooping round looking for accommodation? I sent him away with a flea in his ear. It's none of their business what I do with my property. The war's over, I told him. We may have had to put up with them regulations then, but not now. And if my poor husband yeah, was Yeah, well, sorry to bother you. Yeah, we was just going round looking door to door on the off Come chance. On, like, yeah. I, um, I do have a room, as a matter of fact. Have you? Well, it's a basement, really, but, um, it's got a window. <laughs> Quite a pleasant aspect, actually. Of course, when my poor husband was alive, we had We'll help. take it. Oh. Oh, is it for both of you? No, yeah, it's for Yeah, yeah, for both of us. Hey? And I trust you young people are married. I won't have any indecency in my basement. Well, yeah, we're engaged. We're... we're getting married next week. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's great. <coughs> <coughs> Lou, you're bleeding! Bleeding what? Oh, Christ. Oh, oh. Oh, oh my God! You've won second prize in the beauty contest, collect £10. <laughs> you, beauty contest? Yeah, me, £10. <laughs> Hold on, pal, Mel, that's mine, and I've got an hotel, no, so you Harvey. owe me. It don't matter how much I owe you, I'm skinned. Then you'll have to mortgage something. No, oh, I don't want to. You've got no choice, it's the rules. He calls himself a socialist. Man, I'll buy your Leicester Square, cos then I'll have a set. Yeah, then I'll land on it and it cost me a fortune. Go on, Mum. Oh, Harvey, can't you lend me the rent till I pass go again? No. Money isn't everything, you know. It is when you land on Pall Mall. Mm. No doubt about it. Property's a game. That's why them estate agents can afford to be so snotty. They'll soon change their tune when Harriet stumps up the deposit. She's got a checkbook. Are you really going to marry Mrs. Wright, Dad? She'll have me. Don't mean I won't still love you and Mags. Oi. Sorry I clouted you for something. Oh, that's all right. Shame I can't stay at my old school, though, seeing my new mum will be in charge. Hold on. 750. <sighs> Good job I had a bit put by. Yeah? Telephone call for you, Mr. Moon. Now, you two, behave. No cheap. Ah, oh, sorry, Mr. Ah. Gottlieb, come in. Look, I've hardly given your phone number to anyone, and then only for an emergency. All right. It's your daughter. I thought she weren't speaking to me. No. To you, she won't talk. She gave a message for you. What now? She just said, Lou is very ill. And everything is your fault. I trust everything was your satisfaction, Squadron Livia? Except that the braised celery was a little on the fibrous side. I do apologize, sir. Mustn't use the business account for what has been such an exceptional pleasure. Thank you, sir. Madam. Oh, Rupert, that was superb. Didn't find the braised celery a little fibrous? Oh, I like it chewy. I suppose I expect too much of a restaurant. I, I remember what the food was like here before the war. Of course. Although the Savoy Grill was always my favourite, I'm surprised we never bumped into each other there. Oh, I was never a, a regular there. Because I was bringing up two small children. You must remember, Rupert, I am a little older than you. So you keep telling me, but I find it impossible to believe. <laughs> you must have been very lonely since your husband was shot down. Oh, so many have suffered. I've been very lucky. I have my children, a little job. But I've told you, a woman like you shouldn't have to work behind a bar. A woman like me? Do you really know me well enough to know what kind of woman I am? I know you're the sort of woman who shouldn't be alone in the world. The sort of woman a man would be honored to protect and provide for. 
It's been a lovely evening, Rupert, but it's getting rather late. Oh, I was hoping we might share a nightcap in my rooms. Well, perhaps another time. Tomorrow. Well, I get my jag back from the mechanic in the morning. I thought if the weather holds, we might take a little run down to the south coast. Well, a day by the sea would be lovely. <laughs> I stop at a day. There are several pleasant little hotels in Bournemouth. I hope you don't think I'm being terribly brash, but I've never met a woman who attracted me so strongly. Not since my dear wife died in that terrible car crash in South Africa. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've never been to Bournemouth. What is it, Max? Max, now, tell us what's wrong. I don't know, Nanny. It's been poorly for weeks, and tonight he started coughing up blood. It's all them fags he smoked. I keep telling him, no it, good for It is not the bloody fags. It's that flea-ridden doss ass where you abandoned him with all them tramps. That's not Dad's fault. He had to stay there, too. Yeah, not as long as poor Lou did, though. Max, tell us, sir. Uh, how was he feeling? Well, you know, before. He's been worn out, Nan. Off his food? Yeah. How do you know? Well, what do you think he's got, Mum? Well, don't ask me, Harvey. I'm not a doctor, am I? Mags, uh, why don't you and Stan go and see if there's a cup of tea going anywhere? There's nothing up there, Stan Lee. Come on, we'll try this way. Are you thinking what I think you're thinking? What do you think I'm thinking? Well, I was first at Clapton Orient. Big strapping kid, centre and half he was. Went off his food. One day he started coughing up blood in training. That's right, Sam. God help Lou. God help all of us. Hort says you can't get a cup of tea unless you're a patient. Oh, blimey. Are you Mr. Lewis's family? Not exactly. Oh, pardon me. He ain't got no family. I'm his best mate. And I'm his fiancé. Oh. Is there a next of kin? He's, he's not gonna... We're all he's got, Doctor. I'm afraid you're not all he's got. He's also got pulmonary tuberculosis. I'm very sorry. He's gonna die, isn't he? You'll be all right, love. I won't. I can feel it. Look, I'm the one who spends most time with him. I'm the one who kisses him. At least we'll be together when we're both dead. Now, look, love, there's no point in us all getting worked up. Now, we've all been with Lou. We've just got to wait till they develop the X-rays. And what I'm gonna do without him? Don't start all that again, Mags. You don't bloody well care, do you? Of course I care, you me kids. I care about you more than anything else in the world. More than you care about Lou anyway. Right, if I had to choose between you and Stanley on one side and Lou on the other, no contest. You're wicked. No, he's not, love. He's right. Don't you care neither? Oh. Mags, we've all got to try and stay calm. Why? What's the point? <laughs> What are you lot doing here at two o'clock in the morning? Here, you ain't flown off another flight. There you are. <laughs> I think you'd better sit down, Rick. Oh, thank you very much, Harvey. It is my house. So what is this deputation, then? It's low. Oh, he ain't been nicked again, has he? They've taken him in up the hospital. TB. Oh, my God. You better have a cup of tea, Rick. But we've all been with him, you, Stanley, Maggie. We could all have it. That's why we all got to stick together until we know. We've all been x-rayed. Well, how did it happen? Did he start coughing oh. up blood? Or even I am being x-rayed. They said they can do you in the morning. Where's Stan? Leave him, Rick. You only just went to sleep. My Uncle George died of TB just after the Great War. He was only 37. I'm 37, are they? So am I. Morning, sir. Lovely motor you got there. Bull, isn't it? That's right, sir. I don't suppose you've any idea what may have delayed Mrs. Moon. We had arranged to drive to the coast. No idea, sir. She's not on today. Obviously, or she wouldn't have agreed to come to the coast. I couldn't care less. Plenty more fish in the sea. Especially at the seaside. <laughs> if you see her, tell her it's her loss. Mm. 
This salmon is wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's from Jack Cohen. He kept it back specially for us. That was nice of him. Is he well? Thank God. Yeah. He asked how you are. Oh. What did you tell him? Oh, I told him you were fine. I am fine. Um, Frida, he was wondering... Oh, no, Eric. <laughs> no, next week he has a Masonic function, and he was wondering whether you would like to... Matchmaking oh, belongs in the ghetto, Eric. If he wants to ask me out, let him ask me out. But he did ask you out. He didn't go. He's a very nice man. He has no conversation, Eric. All he knows is salmon and salt beef. Well, he will be a very good provider. So food isn't everything. The moon seem very nice people. Ah, now you change the subject. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not so sure I would like to have strangers in the house again. They shout, they argue, they go to public houses and come in late. You're always at the bakery. How can you know this? Well, all go in go to public houses and come in late. Yeah, well, I didn't hear them come in last night. Where, Pa? The gas meter again. Oh, Eric, don't be silly. The council sent them. No, Frida, you will go upstairs and see if the things are still there. I'm not going to spy, Eric, really. I'm yes. not asking you to spy. I'm asking you to go and see. Well, supposing they walk in? So, you said the place looks bare. Go upstairs, make it look nice and demutely. Well, take some of your paintings up there. You always said ah, it. You can't wait to get rid of my paintings, can you? Hey, might be cheaper to get a season ticket. Oh, pardon me, young lady. I... Good morning. Ah, oh, morning, oh, Doctor. Good morning. Good What's up? happened? I gave up smoking months ago. See, my uncle died. Do you know, we all had a wink of sleep all night. Please, if you'll let me speak. I'm glad to be able to say... Lou's all right. No, I'm afraid Mr. Lewis is quite ill. But all of you are clear. Oh, thank God. There is some research that suggests that certain families may have an inherited resistance to bacillus tuberculosis. Well, that's all very well. What about me? This is the missus. Oh, um, I don't believe we've seen your chest. Ain't many blokes can say that, neither. Well, that's what I'm here for, the x-ray. Where do I go? Oh, see. Nurse, follow me. Her uncle had it. Which one? Uncle George, does it matter? Nurse, will you take Mrs... Uh, Mrs. Moon. Mrs. Moon through to X-ray? Was Uncle George a real uncle or just an American soldier? Shut up! Oh, I haven't got my money. How much is this X-ray? All treatment connected with pulmonary tuberculosis is free of charge. That's a Labour government for you. Politics? Is that all you can bleed in well think of at a time like this? Excuse me, Doctor. What's going to happen to Lou now? Mr. Lewis, I mean. I understand, as well as being without family, he's also homeless. He was living in the common lodging house. I know. We're going to have to screen all the tramps. I stayed there when I'd nowhere else to go. No offence meant, I'm sure. But under the circumstances, we'll transfer Mr Lewis to a sanatorium as soon as possible. Oh, does that mean there's still some hope, then? We wouldn't waste a bed on him if there wasn't. I'm sorry to sound so brutal. Doctor, what are his chances? One in five recovers. Blimey, you wouldn't back an horse at them odds, would you? Doctor, can I visit him? We certainly encourage visits. But the fact that you're all clear at present is no guarantee against infection. Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, it's, it's all right. Bring up one or two little things you might like. Um, perhaps make the room a little more homely. <laughs> uh, not that I want you to think that I'm in any way trying to impose my taste. It, it's just that my brother is um, rather an amateur at being a landlord. Your brother? Yeah, Eric. Oh, I thought he was. Well, he's quite a bit older than you, isn't he? Well, 12 years. Nice paintings. Oh, thank you. I'm afraid the uh, use of colour is a little immature. What do you mean you painted them? Well, Hitler wasn't the only Austrian with artistic pretensions. I thought you only painted houses. No, allied propaganda. Uh, is Mrs. Moon well? Both Mrs. Moons are well, thank God. I'm sorry, both? Yeah. Oh, you're married. Well, more sort of estranged. Um, there is someone else. May I speak frankly, Mr. Moon? Yes? 
What about? You, you look awful. Do I? You sure? Listen, I was in Austria when the Germans arrived. I know what you look like. They marched down our street. I saw myself in the mirror and I look like you look now. Well, perhaps a little more color in my cheeks. I feel very bad about my mate. He's on his way out. He's got TB. Oh, no. Still, at least my kids have been given it all clear. And you? Yeah, I'm clear. Look, if you're worried about us staying here... No, 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 of course not. But your brother? You must stay here as long as you like. Thanks. But why do you feel so guilty about your friend? Well, we come through the war together, and uh, I left him in a doss house when I come here. So he wouldn't have caught it there. It must have been in his lungs for years. The, uh, the lesion. Lesion? One of my brothers was a doctor. Was a doctor? The rest of my family, they stayed a little too long. We lost contact. I only hope... I'm sorry, I'm... Well, that puts me in place, doesn't it? What do you mean? Well, it makes my problems a very small beer. Oh, God, you're feeling guilty because you're not dying? Look, you can take the trouble of the whole world on your shoulders, but it doesn't do the world any good, it doesn't do you any good. It's not your fault life is hard, Harvey Moon. Very nice of you. Put yourself in my position. I found that it helps if you have something to look forward to. For instance, I never make an appointment with the dentist without first buying a theatre ticket for that evening. So you must have a lot of things to look forward to. Well, my lady friend's coming back tomorrow. Ah. That's better than a theatre ticket, isn't it? Mum, is it tigers what don't live in Africa, or is it leopards? How should I know? I'm not a furrier. Bugger. Mum? What? Is it a peninsula like an island, or is that an isthmus? What are you doing homework for, Stan? You're in off the grammar. It's a lovely day for playing out. Yeah, I know. Miss Wright gave Sandra Christmas to do while she was abroad. She's back tomorrow. Oh, is she? Mads, is a peninsula like... Oh, not there, Stanley. You were a bit late. Our consignment for the Singapore garrison tested at 40, so we had to work late. Well, you can't expect the army to protect the empire without a load of Johnnies to protect the army. How do you test Johnnies, Never Mads? you mind. What are you doing with my sewing machine? Nothing. I can't get it threaded. Yeah. Mum, I've made up my mind. I'm going up the hospital. Margaret, I thought we'd agreed it was stupid for you to risk copping a dose of TB. Doctor said we moons was resistant. Yeah, well, I'm only a moon by marriage. I don't want a court disaster. I had enough of that when I got engaged to your father. But you tied a knot in this. But I can't abandon Lou. Mummy needs me. Look, Margaret, you've got to face facts. Lou's copped it. No, no, he ain't. Look, plenty of people pull through. You best just try to forget him, love. But I can't. I love him. You've got your own life to lead. I can give him the strength to fight. I'm going. Maggie told him yet? Yeah? I suppose so. Best it weren't your fault, Lou caught it. Dad, is it tigers what don't live in Africa, or is it leopards? Later, son. Hold your horses, Max. Got some good news. About Lou? I've managed to find him a bed in the sanatorium. Where? Somewhere well away from the smoke, where there's loads of fresh air, decent grub, out in the country. What, Epping? Aberdeen. But that's miles away, isn't it? Yeah, it's a fair journey. Aberdeen is in the north of Scotland, 126 miles north of Edinburgh. We did it in geography. Thank you, son. But how am I going to visit him up there? Oh, no. When's he going? Well, when I popped in the hospital, they'd already moved him. Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> now what am I going to do? Oh, Mags! Aberdeen, eh? Nothing to do with me. It's the first bed to come vacant. Oh, thanks, so. What do you mean? Was it hard swinging that? I don't been on the couch to help. It was the hospital. Well, there's no need for you to hide your light under a bushel with me, are they? I ain't. I'll tell you, I was terrified of Maggie visiting that hospital, fetching all them germs back here. Mind you, I never thought Lou was good enough for her when he was well. Not like Rupert. Maggie didn't say nothing about her. Rupert? It's nothing to do with Maggie. Rupert's a bloke I met. He's a real gent. You sure? Well, it's real McCoy. Commercial pilot. Runs a Jaguar. Oh, it's Jaguars that don't live in Africa, isn't it? They just stay. Look, she's given me hundreds to do, and I've only done nine. We were supposed to go down the coast this weekend. I had to stand him up because of the x-ray. I mean this week. Hope it works out for you. Well, thank you very much, Harvey. You ain't so bad yourself in small doses. Well, better love you and leave you. Got to meet the boat trainer now. Oh, can I come? I can do some spotting. Oh, does he have to come along? She's been away three weeks, Harvey. You're going to need a chaperone.
well-known fact. You only get the job if you've got a speech impediment. What's that? I'm just being wrong. I suppose the boat was delayed. Could have been torpedoed, Dad. No, the war's over, Stanley. I know that, but I read in this comic that these Japs were hiding off this island in the Pacific because they hadn't heard the atom bomb had been dropped and they thought the war was still on. But suppose a German submarine... Hey, Dad, that's it! She's missed her connection. It's you I'm here to meet, Mr. Moon. She's all right, isn't she? Nothing's happened. I'm afraid I have some uh, rather bad news for you. Stanley, um, run along and get some more train numbers in five minutes, eh? I've got to be training the station. We'll get some doubles. You can use them for swaps. All right. What is it? I have a message for you from Harriet. I can place his contents in one sentence. She's staying in Holland. You mean she's extending her holiday? Mr. Moore. Oh. How can I put this? As you know, I've always thought that you and my niece belonged in different worlds. I'm glad to say that Harriet has now come round to my point of view. Ray? Oh, uh, Mike fill up your nans. Can you take Stan up there? I'm late for work again. I've got loads, Mum. Did you get the boat train, Stan? Stanley did. Harriet didn't. Well, didn't she show up? I don't want to talk about it. Look, you push off to your roof. I'll look after the boy. She ain't gone and dropped you, has she? Not really. She's taking this teaching job over there. Oh, hush. For the next three years. Don't start crowing. I'm not. I really sympathise. Dear, oh, dear. Two-faced bitch. I nearly finished my own work for her and all. Cow. Don't Stanley, call her that. You called her out of the station. Mum just called her a bitch. That's different. Why is it different? Because it is. Oh, there's no living with you two. What's she going to do? I oh, don't ask me. I ain't sung in yet. Here, is that tonight? Yeah. Can I borrow it? I can't get on the tram without nothing to read. Be my guest. Oh, my God. Read, what is it? Never leave. Arrested in Bournemouth for brutal murder. So? That's him. That's Rupert. <laughs> <laughs> 